Good morning, church. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's a blessing to speak to you from the comfort of your home. Please share this video, invite your family members for them to join us this morning. Uh, over a couple of weeks, Pastor Mark introduced a message or a series, God is not quarantined. I definitely believe it's true. Uh, God is not quarantined because you cannot quarantine something you cannot contain because God cannot be contained, therefore you cannot quarantine him. God is everything, God is everywhere, God is too much. But this morning, I'd like to talk about the dream. And the mes my message this morning is when you interpret somebody else's dream, God will interpret your dream. Uh, I believe all of us, we have dreams. God has given you a dream, be it big or small, we all, we all carry dreams. We are born, and when we are born, we find dreams, and those dreams become part of our lives. God has given us these dreams so that these dreams can help us live in this uh, world or this earth he has created. So um, I would like to say it doesn't matter what dreams you have, could be small, could be big, your dream is important. Our lives are like a jigsaw puzzle, you know, each piece makes a picture. Imagine if somebody who had a dream to make a shot and putting on did not make a shot, I would not buy it. Somebody had to have a dream to make a shot so good so that when I find it, I'm attracted to it and I buy it. So he fulfilled his dream, but he's also interpreted my dream. Somebody made this ring, you know, when we get married, we all buy rings and we give them to our loved ones. When he made it, he fulfilled his dream and he also interpreted my dream. My dream was I need a ring. His dream was to make a ring. God has created us in a way, uh, we have the spirit, we have the soul, we have the body. But the spirit lives in a different dispensational realm. The spirit cannot physically come and be you. It cannot be there. So the spirit cannot work alone. God then created a soul. A soul is your personality. It, you know, a soul is the real you. You are a soul. So, but the soul controls the six senses, you know, the sense to feel, the sense to smell, you know, uh, and those senses work with the soul to make the body functional or to make you human. But then he realized that the spirit is from a different dimension and the soul cannot work on its own. Then God created an agency called the mind. Everything you've ever thought about begins in your mind. All the thoughts, all the dreams you have begin in your mind. So man plays a big role to make sure it interfaces the messages from the spirit and the soul and to the body. So the mind controls you. That's why if the mind shuts down, you either go in a coma or you cease to function because the mind tells all the, the different parts of your body function. So how do we get the dreams? When you go to bed and you lie down and you sleep in the middle of the night, your spirit doesn't sleep because, because the spirit is not a human, you know, and this God speaks through the spirit. He speaks to your spirit and your spirit speaks to your mind and your mind con connects with your soul and your soul transfers all the messages. The moment you understand how you function spiritually, it's easy to understand everything that goes around you, around your life. So we sleep at night and your spirit, God speaks through your spirit and your spirit communicates to your mind, but also uh, the enemy, the devil can communicate to your mind. That's why when you sleep, you have dreams that are confusing, dreams that are scary, dreams that are, you know, not good. So um, that's why the Bible says you renew your mind with the word of God. So whatever you put in your mind before the beginning of your day and before you go to bed determines what what will interact and inter, 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 it determines what will interact with your spirit because your spirit cannot work alone and God will, because God is not human, as I explained at the beginning, God does not speak to you directly, he speaks to your spirit and your spirit speaks to your mind. So that's how dreams 
really happening. So you can get a dream when you go to sleep and your spirit communicates to your mind and your mind interprets a dream. You can get a dream through association. You know, you could just go to somebody who has a dream, you work with them and then you get an idea. Probably this Bible did not begin like this. Somebody interpreted it to a certain level and then somebody got an idea to make it better so that it's readable and it's functional. So that's how you can, that's another way you can get a dream. Another way you can get a dream, you can get a dream by getting involved into something. For example, if you feel you called to serve God, all you need to do is to tell Pastor Mike that I would like to be in ministry, you come in a minister, sometimes you don't know what you're gonna do, but you end up um, finding your purpose and your dream and your vision there, you know, because you start by singing and then you realize, hey, I can lead, you know, uh, worship, and then you realize, hey, I can, uh, I can do more, and then it becomes part of you and it becomes your purpose and it becomes your dream. So let's jump into the Bible. Genesis 37 talks about a man, you know, who had a dream, Joseph. Joseph had a dream. He interpreted the dream to his family. His family did, did, did not welcome the dream the way he thought because they did not like him anyway. The Bible said they, did not, they hated him even the most. So there are things you should know. When you get a dream, these things will happen to you, you know. The people will hate you. Not because they hate you sometimes, or sometimes because they hate you, you know. Your dream would be so big that it would scare them, and they would think you'd be better than them, and they would begin to fight you. Then, um, he saw a dream when he was binding uh, shelves in the field, and the other shelves bowed, came around his shelf, and bowed to his shelf. Now, the shelves represent the sons of Jacob, and the one shelf represent... Uh, Joseph. And then he explained the dream and they did not welcome him. But then he had another dream. He had a dream where he was, um, he saw the star, the moon, the star, the sun, and the moon bowing to him. He explained to his family that dream again. Now, the star represents the children of, the, of Jacob, and the moon and the sun represents Jacob, and the moon represents the wives of Jacob. And they did not really uh, welcome his dream. But even when you explain your dream to so many people and they hate it and they don't like it, they will, there are some people who will just keep it at heart and they know that God has called you. So they hated him and one day, Joseph went to report what had happened to his brothers and, go, and, and Jacob sent him to look, to check on his brothers. When he, they saw him from afar, they said, look at the dreamer. They're gonna call you all sorts of names when you have a dream. They plotted to kill him. Always remember this, when you have a dream, you'll have to die. The Bible says they plotted to kill him and they put him in the pit to die. They're gonna kill you. You will have to be prepared to die. Now, your death may not be the death of Joseph. Your death may be leaving the people you love. The people who loved you hate you. The things you used to do, you may need to leave them. You know, that's how you'll die. You'll have to die to certain things. So, um, but when they put him in the pit, what happened? They saw the Malachites, the Ishmaelites, sorry. They were coming by and, you know, and they decided to sell him into slavery. So, in the pit you saw death. God saw an opportunity. God was driving Joseph away from his family because if he stayed in his family, he would not thrive and become what he wanted to be. Sometimes the reason why you need to die because if you stay under negativity, if you stay under haters, if you stay under people who don't respect and trust your dream, you will end up useless. And that's what his brothers wanted him to be. But even though he was in pit, as in he was thrown in the pit to die, God saw an opportunity because God was taking him from the negativity. And then he was sold into, uh, into slavery. The general fellows bought him. Um, you see slavery there, but God sees an opportunity to learn, to be mentored, to grow, uh, to learn how to do things. While Joseph was in, um, uh, in, in, in the fellows, uh, general's house, he learned how to manage a household. He learned how to, to run things. The Bible says, and God was with him, that everything he did prospered. So, there are two stages so far I've talked about. In order for you to walk into the destiny of your dream, you will have to die. 
Die to the things that may hold your dream back. Die to, the, to your old ways. If you want to know God more and serve God, you may need to separate yourself and learn to seek God, and you learn to pray, and you learn to read the Bible, and you learn to prepare. Then the second stage is slavery. You will need to uh, have an opportunity to be mentored. God might send you to serve somewhere. You might need to ask Pastor Mike that I would like to serve. And then when, you know, it gives you an opportunity, you learn how to do things. You learn to sing. You learn to, to set up equipment. You learn to arrange the chairs. You learn to prepare the meals. You need the learning curve before you get to your dream. So the first step, we see death to fresh, to things. And then the second stage, we see slavery. But where there was death, there is opportunity. Where there was slavery, there is mentorship, growth. And then the third step, we see prison. Now, we see that Joseph was sent to prison as if whatever he went through was not enough, but God saw palace. He saw that that's the place where he will get where he needs to be. Sometimes God will send you, will send you to a place of, that looks like a prison, just to prepare you to be what, you, what he wants you to be. Now, in the general's house, he learned to manage things because his vision was for him to manage a nation. He needed to, man, to manage a household, and the household of the general was big. The general had so many slaves and servants, you know. He learned to manage all those things in that house. Now, in the prison, he learned to actually interpret a dream, you know, the physical dreams and, and, and the dream when you sleep and you wake up and, and God speak to you. He interacted more spiritually in the prison, you know. Now, we humans sometimes we want, to, uh, we want to look into the future when you have a dream. But I want to encourage you this morning, don't look into your future late yet. Focus on your dream. Work on your dream. Allow God to take you wherever he wants to take you. It might be working with somebody. It might be helping somebody. It might be jumping on the team. You know, it might be being a connect group leader. It might be being a worship leader. You know, it's good for you to allow God to take you through those stages because actually you cannot jump any process. You know, for you to get to the destination of your dream, you will need to walk through a process. So, so don't be vision focused. You know, don't be sorry, future driven, be vision focused because be dream focused, focus on your dream, but allow, know that every stage is you are learning. This morning, um, um, you know, I was just thinking about um, a number of things, you know, I was thinking about value and I just say, what is value? And I realized value is the measure of your usefulness. As you're working towards your dream, you become useful to people. You will meet people who will help you through the journey, through the journey of your dream. So you need to make yourself valuable in order for you to get to the destination of your dream. When Joseph went into the general's house, he was so valuable, the Bible says, and God was with him, and everything he did in that house prospered. But then, if God sees that you're getting so comfortable in that place, he will rise situations and he will push you to the next level. The devil rose up because at the beginning, the devil knew the destination of Joseph. The devil rose up against him. At first, the devil pushed him in the pit to kill him, but God gave him an opportunity there. And then it pushed him to slavery, but God gave him an opportunity to learn, you know. Uh, the devil thought, now I'm going to send him to the far, that is the prison. And what happened was, in the prison, God used him there. So everything you do is an opportunity. I want to encourage you this morning, find a dream to interpret. There is a dream you can interpret. Everybody, God has given you the dream to interpret. So this morning, I'm going to be praying for you. But if you've not, if you had that small dream and you left it behind the cupboard, please pick it up. God has not given up on you. God has been um, like, you know, behind the, the curtain, like a puppet master, walking, uh, pulling strings to that direction. He's gonna push you to your destiny. Pick up the dream, interpret the dream. You may need to join a connect group. You may need to join, for example, the dream of Parkland. You may need to join the choir. You may need to serve wherever God allows you to serve. Don't feel tired of it. Do it one day. God will interpret your dream. If you're together as a family, hold your hands or bow your heads. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you for all the dreamers that are watching me right now. Father, some of them, they are on the in the different stages of their dreams. 
some of them are uh, at the stage of being of death others are, are at the stage of uh, slavery or mentorship others are at the stage of prison but lord you are with them all the way my prayer is may you give them the grace may you give them uh, open their eyes may you bring the right people and may you use them may the wisdom and knowledge increase father thank you for all the family members of parklands watch over them take care of them in jesus name we pray amen god bless you good morning church i hope you have really enjoyed uh, this morning's worship adams what a great message about your dream interpreting your dream receiving your dream um, God's been uh, speaking to me actually about our future together and our dream uh, as well. And I just wanted to share a couple of thoughts about um, the dream that I have for our future. And that is first around connection. Um, this is a season where we need to be ready to reconnect. We have to be flexible because we don't know exactly what it's going to look like. And we have to be adaptable because we've got to be able to make the very best of our connection. God wants us to be connected. I want you to be hungry to connect. Um, connection is going to look different to what we want it to look like, so that will be challenging. But the hunger is the thing that you need to stir up inside you, the hunger to connect, the hunger to serve, and the hunger to be together. The second dream I have is around the area of giving and supply. Uh, we need to be uh, committed and we need to be determined during this time to be powerful givers. It's nearly the end of the financial year and we want to be able to share the love of God with our church, with our community and with our missions around the world. And so I encourage you, if you haven't been tithing, get tithing. Um, bring in those offerings. If you want to catch up on some back tithing, we can see you during the week. We can process anything for you. But it's very important to me that we're ready to start on a strong financial foundation for next year. And so I really just encourage you, start dreaming about how great um, connection can look like in our church during this season and how powerful our giving can be if we're full of faith and unified and do that together. So I encourage you, be part of a connect. Connect groups are starting to meet live, physically, in, in person. Uh, some other um, restrictions are lifting and we might be able to do a bit of worship together. We might be able to have church together. So be ready, have an open heart for that and uh, be full of faith and be ready to be generous um, and ready to um, be a, a great witness in our community as you release that seed that you have, that gift that you have, that blessing that you have release it to the church, release it to the storehouse so that we can pray and release it to those who need to be touched by God. Well, I want to say thanks to Jackson and Brittany and Fiona for leading us in worship this morning. They're about to lead us again. Uh, thanks to Lockie and Steph, Shiana and Zach and uh, everyone who helps with production. You guys are a real blessing in our lives. And uh, I encourage you to take some communion after um, this live feed finishes and uh, reach out and contact someone. Bless them, share a word with them, pray with them. Come on, let's continue to be a great church, the body of Christ and influence our community. There's no striving in you. There's no striving. Just abiding, there's no striving in you, there's no striving, just abiding, there's no striving in you, there's no striving, just abiding. Striving, just abiding there. 
there's no striving in you. There's no striving, just abiding. Abide in 